Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. I want to talk about something that's really disturbing and I'm going to tell you what I want you to do about it, but we do need to talk about it. A little over a year ago, a deadly virus started showing up on pig farms in Iowa. Since then, over 100,000 pigs and piglets have died of this virus every week in the United States. Of course, farmers in the USDA are focused on the economics of the situation. The number of hogs slaughtered has gone down 4.2% from last year, and the price of foods like pork chops and bacon has gone up by 12%. Well, maybe that'll be a deterrent for some people to not eat it. In any case, how does this happen? Well, it starts with cramming tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of animals in close quarters in an extremely unsanitary environments. Living conditions are the primary reason why we're using antibiotics as a prophylactic in these farms. Farmers give these animals uh, antibiotics because infection is easy to get and it spreads like wildfire in these facilities. That's what the big problem is with antibiotic resistant bacterial infections in this country. And it's also why neighbors hate these facilities. They pollute the environment um, with manure and they ruin rivers and lakes and, and the air. One factory farm east of Columbus attracted swarms of flies that were so large that they actually had to cancel school because it wasn't safe for children to be outside with the flies. Another farming area in northwestern Ohio, um, near an area called St. Mary's Lake, has so polluted that lake that it is completely unusable. Property values of all the people who own homes on the lake have completely come down. And if dogs drink the water, they've actually had reports of animals drinking the water and dying on the beach. So that's what these people are doing to the local community. And now this. The antibiotics used on the farms don't protect against viruses. And now the environmental problems have gotten worse as farmers are trying to figure out how to dispose of all of these dead animals. One major concern is what burying so many animals will do to underground water supplies. We know there's a lot of mortality from this disease and we're seeing evidence of burial in areas with shallow groundwater that a lot of people rely on for drinking water and recreation, said Kelly Foster with Water Keepers Alliance and Environmental Group. The disease has spread to North Carolina and Water Keepers has posted pictures of boxes of dead piglets and dead animals with their bodies barely covered with dirt. The group asked the state of North Carolina to declare a state of emergency, and then they've declined to do that. The state's Department of Agriculture issued a statement saying there's no crisis and that the animals are currently being disposed of through rendering plants and composting. Now, somehow this doesn't make me feel reassured, and the reason is that rendering plants are where dead, sick animals like this are processed into ingredients used in products like soap and glue and toothpaste, mouthwash, hair dyes, nail polish, and some pharmaceutical products. The agricultural industry in North Carolina has mobilized to prevent pictures and other evidence from becoming public. Three legislators have proposed laws that would prohibit state agencies from releasing aerial photos of farms, and one U.S. Senator has led an effort to impose a moratorium on the EPA's practice of taking aerial photos in order to monitor compliance with the Clean Water Act. Of course, the most important thing to do is protect the farmers, not to address public health concerns. These farmers are so out of compliance with everything already, and a legislator has actually proposed that we don't even monitor them to the extent that we do now. According to the National Pork Producers Council, about 8 million animals have died of the virus. According to the USDA, samples from 30 state labs have tested positive and there have been reports of sick hogs in 31 states. Even scarier is the fact that the virus has spread to more traditional farms where hogs are raised on pasture and there are no confinement facilities. These farmers who run responsible operations and are not mass polluters stand to lose 20, 10 to 20% of their pigs through no fault of their own. Experts believe that the virus was transported on trucks into areas and that's how these pigs got sick. Cleaning this up isn't going to be easy. In Ohio where I live, farmers are cleaning and disinfecting their trucks, trying to heat the trailers to 160 degrees and sanitizing them. Drivers wear disposable booties and it's taken five months to eliminate the virus on one farm and of course it can come back. Um, water the farmers here are insisting that they can properly dispose of the carcasses, but in North Carolina, Waterkeeper says that the sheer volume of animals, 2 million in North Carolina, means that the farmers can't easily move the animals off their farms without spreading disease, so they're burying them instead along coastal waterways. The state of North Carolina mandates that the bodies be buried to the extent that they even do that, because remember we have pictures of crates of pigs and barely buried animals, but 
they're actually supposed to be two feet down, which means they will almost uh, positively come in contact with groundwater. At this time, the virus doesn't affect humans, but the dead bodies can become a breeding ground for viruses and bacteria and toxins that do affect humans. Waterkeepers provided the state of North Carolina with pictures documenting that one farm had an open burial, kit, uh, burial pit. The state issued a warning and then the North Carolina Farm Bureau started complaining very loudly that pictures create unnecessary expense for its members. They apparently missed two very important points, that their operations are breeding grounds for viruses and disease and that they wouldn't have to worry about complaints by third parties if they were in compliance. Farmers aren't going to stop what they're doing. It's too profitable and they get away with it and the government helps them get away with it. So the only way to solve this problem is to dry up demand. And I've talked about this for a good long time. But I said at the beginning, I was gonna tell you guys what I want you to do. And I really want you to make a promise to yourself that you are no longer going to eat food that is produced in these kinds of facilities. It's not safe for you. And consuming it and rewarding these people financially for the terrible things that they're doing is gonna make this planet a place where you and I can't live and certainly the next generation of people are not gonna be able to call a home. So we really got to do something about this, and the only thing these people understand is the economics of drying up the money. That's the only thing that they care about. It's the only thing that concerns them at all. So stop supporting them financially. I stopped eating this stuff 20 years ago. You can too. All right, that's all for today. End of lecture. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend. I'll be back to you again on Tuesday. And in the meantime, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it.